Hi, this is Mark from LongIslandWatch.com. I'm filming this on Valentine's Day, so I've got my red, or the reddest hoodie I have on. Uh, today we are getting into the newly released, or I guess this is a second generation Orient Flight Watch. A quick story about that watch. I, about 10 years ago, I had a meeting with Orient. It's probably about 10 years ago at this point, and we were discussing, uh, you know, watch ideas, and I said, you know, you guys really need to come out with an aviator watch. They're very popular, and simple designs, you know, I know it would be a home run. And sure enough, about 18 months or two years later, uh, the Orient Flight was released in like five different variations, and it was a really, really awesome watch. It sold extremely well. Uh, and then when Orient went through the whole movement upgrade on their Bambinos, their Rakos and Mays, <laughs> Makos and Rays, uh, it disappeared. It was one of the last, I guess it actually probably is the last model to get upgraded when the Defender came out shortly before this one. Uh, so today I've got for you uh, four new Orient flight watches. So for the occasion, I'm wearing a flight watch myself. This is a Seiko Flightmaster SNA411. You'll notice it is on a mesh bracelet. Aha, look at that. It is a Seiko mesh bracelet. So what's the deal with the... Oh, I'm sorry. Do the other wrist, then we'll talk about it. An Islander, of course. Uh, so what's going on here? Well, the f this Flightmaster was sitting on my desk for at least two months. It was back from repair. Uh, it was a return. It was a dud. Uh, my watchmaker fixed it up. Uh, it was returned without the bracelet. Sitting on my desk for about two months, running like a top. And I'm like, wow, you know, one day I'm going to make, I'm going to take that watch. I don't know what to put it on. It's got a really odd lug width of like 21 millimeters or maybe it's a hair over. I'm not sure. Uh, I maybe put it on something like a black and yellow nylon. And then a couple weeks ago, I did the Seiko 5 upgrade, the SRPD-71. And that mesh bracelet happened to be sitting right on my desk next to the Flight Master. And I looked at one, I looked at the other, and I said, Ah, these two need to go together. So you can see it. It's, it was five minutes with a Dremel. I did a pretty decent job. I had to trim down the end lugs and a little bit of the mesh. Uh, I think I got a little happy on, on one of these ends. It's a little more than I should have done. But it fits great. It's very comfortable. It was a 22 millimeter. It's been trimmed down a bit, and it's got the Seiko logo on the class, which, you know, kind of completes the package. Uh, enough uh, monologuing. Let's check out the Orient Flight Watch. Okay, here we go. So one of these is not like the other. Well, I guess it could be on the bracelet, but it's not. This guy, this is several years old. This is one of the original Orient Flight Watches. Actually, a version 2, I believe. Uh, these are all Gen 2 brand new. This guy's several years old. Hasn't been made in many years. I brought him by just for a quick comparison sake. But we have four aviator-style watches, and it looks like they popped one on a bracelet, which is a welcome change, though I feel they could have gone with a nice rich brown leather strap um, like they did in the originals. But... They, they played the case, went with nylon here. It really nice, freshened it up. Everything looks great. I You will hear in my review today, I do have a couple of, I guess, negative things to say. Maybe it's because I launched my own aviator style of watch. Um, but there's some things on the watch that kind of just, I guess, didn't hit with me. And some things I feel they did a great job on. So, I don't know. I guess I'm actually going to start with the black on strap and the, the, I'll do the detail on this guy and then um, we'll do quickly the other three so this is the Orient uh, 22 Jewel Automatic pilot's watch or flight watch uh, with hand winding and hacking they all share the same crazy model numbers RA-ACOHO and then 3B there's a 1L a 2B uh, you know you'll see them all but they all share the same case dimensions the same movement uh, same operation. They run on Orion's own 50, uh, 6722 automatic hand winding hacking movement. Again, Orient makes their own movements, makes their movements in Japan. I cannot say this enough. Orient is a true manufacturer. Yes, they're one of the few, like Seiko, in the affordable sector that still make their own movements. The case is 42, they say 42.4. I'm going to go 42 and a half millimeters in diameter. It's about 11 and a half thick, and it's around 49 on the lug tip to lug tip. The case back is a solid screw down, okay? It is a mineral crystal. It is a 22 millimeter lug. It is a 100 meters of water resistance. It is a screw down crown. So we have to unscrew it to get it to go. We pull it out, seconds hand stops. We can change the time. 
one click out, we can change the date, push it back in, we can wind it. Let me just set the hands up a little bit differently so it looks nice and pleasing. Uh, and tighten it back down. This guy does come on a black leather strap with some contrast stitching. It's pretty nice. Um, it's a thick strap, but it's actually fairly pliable. Signed buckle from Orient. Nice case finishing, brushed. It does have loom, and we'll do loom on all of them later because the loom is different amongst the models. Um, some some of the numbers loom, some don't. The hands look great. Um, the hands are a little skinny for my taste. Again, that's just me. I prefer them to be a bit fatter. Uh, but they did get the hour hand to come right to the tip of the hour circle, which is great. Uh, these are all a type B dial, type B being uh, Beobachter, uh, Observer, Navigator. Minutes are of primary importance. Hours are secondary. The date is done uh, white background, black lettering, which I think is fine on this watch for the for the plated one, I feel like they should have done white on black instead. Um, let's see. Let's uh, let's discuss price quickly for the full retail on all of them. It varies. It goes from about three ten to three thirty, depending if you get it on on a strap, uh, PVD on a, on, a, on a nylon or a, on a bracelet, whatever. So three ten to three thirty. The actual street price that we're selling them for is between two sixty five and two eighty five. So looks great. Oh, I'm. Um, I'm sure I mentioned it was a mineral crystal. I'm just making sure I did. So that's the black one. Let us look at the cream dial. Um, so in the original version, there was a black one. And in, I should have pulled back that far. In this generation, there there is also a cream one. The 5Y was in, it was the old version. And now here is another cream dial. Uh, notice, notice what I appreciate with Orient is the attention to detail. On this one, the hands were white with white loom, you know, white paint. Now, because the dial is a lighter lighter color, they've gone with black outline hands with loom in between. It does not appear that the numbers are illuminated. We'll go through it in a second. But if you have a sharp eye, you will check out that it does appear that the hash marks are illuminated at the 5, 10, 15. Cool. I, I think it is. If it's not, uh, I'll eat my words, I guess. But I like that they did that. It was a great idea in keeping with, you know, having references on the dial for, for luminescence and not just having a set of loomed hands that you can't figure out what time it is. So this is the, um, I guess what I'm calling the cream dial on the leather strap. Nice, same strap, um, you know, same build, uh, just brown, sign clasp. <clears throat> Excuse me. And then we come into, uh, what I actually, I guess it might be my favorite one. I really dig what they did here on the PVD. Uh, stealthy appearance. Uh, the dial is not black. The dial is slate, if you will, but it also has texture. Can you pick that up? Can you see the texturing? Really good looking. And the hands pop against it. On this one, I feel they could have done um, a, a black date disc with white lettering, but they did not. But we'll see the loom on it in, in a few minutes. Oh, they all have a signed Orient crown. Love it or hate it, the Orient logo. And then the blue one on the bracelet, which it's a beautiful blue. It is, can you see it? It's a little bit reflective, a little bit sunburst. It's nice looking. It's rich. It's deep. They did a nice job with the blue. But hollow end lengths. And it's, it, it's one of those things now that gives the appearance of being solid links, but I'm actually not sure if it is. <laughs> it's sometimes it's hard to tell. Sometimes they fold them really well, uh, and 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 the seam is polished. But I, I'm not totally sure. The bracelet has a decent heft to it. Uh, it definitely is released with pins. Um, a two position micro adjustment on the clasp, which is nice. I mean, this bracelet to me, not not excellent. My one criticality of of the watches is. The dial on an aviator is supposed to be easy to read, supposed to be simple, which is great. But I feel like they pushed the hour circle out so far. I'll zoom in a bit. I feel like they pushed the hour circle out so far. Did away with water resist 100 meters, which I'll show on the old one in a minute, down here. But kept the Orient logo. I normally don't say a dial is unbalanced because I'm not that kind of, you know artistic or architecturally inspired person, but I feel the dial becomes incredibly unbalanced with 
so much empty, if you will, down here, and then a lot of noise up here with the triangle and then the Orient logo, all the other stuff. Now contrast that. So that's that's probably my biggest nit or nick or nit, whatever it's gonna be about the watch, with the original version, which, I'll move the hands out of the way. They had water resist and 100 meters at the bottom of the dial, which I know some people hate, but it balanced, it balanced everything out. Um, is the hour circle bigger? I mean, I actually think it is. It touches on this one, the bottom, almost the bottom of the triangle. And look at this one; it's a little bit further away from the triangle. Um, so I feel that's I don't know. I guess it just created openness in in the middle of the dial. Maybe I'm just being, you know, nitty, but that's kind of the way it is. Um, but this is the original, which are no longer made. One thing I did want to mention on the original, I wrote it down here somewhere. The original was about 42, so the new case is a bit larger, about half a millimeter larger, and is about an, a millimeter longer on the lug tip to lug tip. Um, but that's about it. Uh, I guess we'll strap, since it's easy for me to do, I'll strap the nylon one on my wrist, and then we'll do a little night shot. So six and three quarter inch wrist, it fits me fine below, above, Fits me very nice. It's a good looking watch. It really is. You know, Orient knows what they're doing with style. I, I feel they, they really make a beautiful watch. I don't don't let my nits come through too much. I'm like I said, I'm I'm trying to sell these watches, not make you not want to buy them. I'm making you want trying to make you want to buy them. Uh, let's see how they light up. Okay, here they are all lined up in a row. Um, keep an eye on the numbers on this guy. I do not think they will light up. And here we go. Yeah, there, so the numbers in the hands are loomed on all of them. Um, it's not exactly dark in here, but it's very readable. The loom is good. One, two, uh, whoops, wrong watch, the blue dial. And then here is the hands. And you can see, you probably actually can't. I'll bump up the exposure just a skirmidgeon. Um, but you can see around the dial, you had those little green ticks. They are certainly uh, lit up. And I think that will indeed bring us to the end. This has been Mark from LongIwatch.com showing you the new Orient Flight Watch. Please like the video if you enjoy it. Enjoyed it. Subscribe to the channel if you have not. Follow me on Instagram. Again, I post a lot of this stuff earlier on Instagram than I, than I do on the videos. And any questions or comments, put them down below, and I'll be sure to address them as soon as I can. Thank you very much for watching. Bye-bye.